sitting on a noisy, moving bus on our way back to our hotel after an exhausting day of visiting monuments and historical sites. I had a conversation with our local host, a Northern Irishman with a Catholic background. I asked him for his definition of the word identity and how it affected his life. We spent the last three days hearing about the issues that divided the people of Northern Ireland and the way they tended to identify with a particular social group and stick by it. The complex explanations of the political climate there seemed never-ending, so at that point in the day, my mind was saturated, my body weary, and my emotions stretched almost to their breaking point. I had to have heard it all by now, I thought. In my mind, I already figured out what I was going to hear from this Northern Irishman, but my assumption couldn't have been more false. His words were enlightening. I expected to get a long, passionate response about history and the importance of loyalty to a particular cause, but instead, I received a stimulating, thought-provoking idea. The idea that we each have multiple identities and that they all intertwine and shape themselves depending on who we are and who we are interacting with. Identity is fluid and can change with the wind, but the most important thing to remember is that identity is simply a foundation for human interaction and communication, nothing more. In that moment, I immediately thought about who I was. The boy who is afraid to approach anyone but loves speaking to people. The boy who loves cell and molecular biology and hip-hop. The boy who sits quietly in the classroom, often with a blank stare on his face, listening to everyone and everything who speaks, passes by, or makes any kind of sound, not saying a word himself. The boy who only found out his name was John in the sixth grade because he had to use it to write an exam. The boy who can barely bring himself to get out of bed on some mornings. Yeah, that happens. What do I want people to see when I meet them for the first time? Which definition of me will become my first impression on them? Am I from New York or St. Lucia? Am I quiet or talkative? Am I shy or brash? Am I decisive or hesitant? Am I confident or uncertain? Is my name even John? With this questioning, I realized these definitions of me weren't even me. I had been told who I was all my life and unwittingly believed everything I was told until that moment. I got off that bus with a newfound sense of awareness and self-leadership. I, Anthony, am ready to be free of that prefabricated prison and demonstrate my nature, my truth, and my picture.